Jason, I want to welcome you to the Convert with Confidence Summit. Well, I was doing lip balm. Start over, start over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I put together this summit for you know coaches and consultants and of course course creators as well as we're all trying to create more passive income for ourselves. However, we're getting stuck in the process of actually converting. Right. We're all trying to maybe maybe a lot of us have been in business for a while and we're trying to scale, but there's something happening. Maybe we have that perfect script, but this perfect script is just not working anymore. Maybe it worked for a while, but it's not working anymore. So, Jason, I want to welcome you to the Convert with Confidence Summit. Jason is a hypnotic influence expert who helps coaches and course creators get more premium sales. So, Jason, I want to welcome you. And can you first tell the audience like what what motivates you to do the work that you do? Yeah, thanks for that introduction. What I'd say becomes the motivation is this idea that I keep meeting people over the years that are incredible at what they do and are wonderfully skilled and whatever their specialty is, they are changing people's lives. And yet by accident, and I would normally say by no fault of their own, but really is by fault of their previous actions, they unfortunately fall into a commodity-based way of thinking to which then translates to the fact that their clients or their potential clients see them only as the category they're inside of. So here's the person who's just the other insurance rep they're now going to work with, just the other health coach or personal trainer they're going to work with. So really the opportunity is that of helping people to shine, helping people to step into that expert guru role and to really communicate in such a way that well, what good are their skills unless there's actually people on the other side benefiting from what they do? And this is an audience that's often a little cautious around sales. So then the solution is, that's why we ought to communicate in such a way to have people wanting more from us even before we make the sales offer. Yeah, I can even think in, in my own um, in my own experience, I remember I would be on a call and like the customer would be surprised. There was an element of surprise. <laughs> When I said my rate, and of course, it's right, it's because something hasn't been done yet. Right. right. That, that's one of those biggest takeaways that people ought to have from these conversations here, which is that if you're waiting to that point of sale to ask for the sale, you've already clearly missed something. Mm -hmm. You need to be telling the stories. You need to be asking the questions. You need to be setting the foundation of authority so that person is already telling themselves the story. And this is what's going to bring, of course, I'm sure the ethics into this conversation, that if those things align with them, now the conversation continues. If those things do not align with them, and perhaps it's criteria that's not important to them, we're going to find a way to respectfully exit that call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see you, you use this phrase, ethical sales. And I, I really wanted to highlight this because I know me personally, I've talked to other coaches and other consultants who, as I speak to them, it sounds more like it's not ethical, right? So can, can you first talk about like what's, what is ethical sales compared to like what you find maybe a lot of coaches and consultants are doing? So where people often, and I'll, I'll tell the story to enter this right, uh, which is that for what I do and for the communities that I run, we run advertisement online to bring people into our world. And discovery number one is uh, there's these things on the web called trolls, uh, if you've heard of them. And there's a modern philosopher, what's her name? Um, Taylor Swift, who said that haters gonna hate. And if you can own the first concern of what you do before someone else could have the idea, basically satisfy objections before they arise, that's what helps you to get the foot in the door. So it's where there's this ongoing gag with my advertisement team that I work with, where the first sentence usually has to be, no, it's not about tricking or manipulating people. It's yeah. about helping people achieve a mutually positive outcome or some paraphrase therein of that. Because at the end of the day, when we hear these words of influence or even persuasion, people start to create some ideas in their mind as to what that might mean. But the truth is, all communication, when it's done appropriately, is influential, even if it's only a matter of saying to a friend, let's go here for dinner on this night. It's always going to have some intended result. And to call it out, there are some who are in the space that I, I sit in that are all about the 
objection crusher, the here's the way to twist the I need to talk to my spouse situation where it becomes like emotional leverage and um, people don't feel good after that. And if you're doing sales in that style, step one, stop it, part of the problem. And step two is to operate instead towards this greater good because the first point of sale is just the beginning of a much bigger conversation. I'd rather have that person on the other end of the situation as the raving fan who is now bringing in their friends, bringing in their business partners and helping to elevate other people. So I come back to the idea of that of systems. I talk about checkpoints of linguistics where like a runner on the track with all these hurdles, we're only moving to the next step as it's good for both people involved. And I'd share a quick story to illustrate this. Sometimes it might be as simple as you know what your product delivers and yet what that person is looking for is something very different. And, and this was a simple one. I'm on this call and clearly she needs a graphic designer. And I teach linguistics. I teach systems in terms of scalable business based on these hypnotic language principles. And she needs a graphic designer to which I say, hey, here's what my program is. Here's what you responded to. And I'll call it out. That's not what I do. However, here's the graphic designer in our influence community. Would you like an introduction? And end of the story is not meant to do the self pat on the back and say, look how awesome this was. Yet, because I didn't try to sell her something that wasn't what she was looking for, yeah. she connected with this graphic designer who had an outstanding experience, who then said a lot of really nice things about what I helped her to do. And the person eventually, in a much more organic way, joined our community. So serve the person better. It's going to serve you better in the long run. Yeah. I love how you use that word organic. Like what comes up for me is like kind of letting it flow naturally versus right. trying to fit like a square peg into a round hole. And, and I know for a lot of us who, if you get anxiety around getting on the phone, I remember me personally, like, like there was anxiety before I picked up the phone, like, oh no, here comes a sales call. Mm -hmm. And it was often well, what I found in myself and maybe some of this, res this, this audience can resonate was my goal was really not a good one. It was like, how do I, how do I get, like, how do I get the sale or how do I close that client? And it was, it wasn't even about the connection at all. <laughs> Well, yeah, in that situation, then it's about what's in it for you. Yeah. And instead to connect every bit of that emotion, this is the formula I share, even if it's a matter of building up that confidence and getting rid of others, what others would call imposter syndrome. If we're stepping into this service-based mindset, this is where it becomes the fact that the quality and the quantity of the goodwill we create then becomes appropriately proportionate to the offers that we then make to the right audience at the right time, there's a lot of modifying language in what I just said, intentionally, <laughs> of the right offer to the right person. Yet, as I go into that conversation with someone, and it's all about how can I best serve them? And yes, appropriately, if I see that there's a solution inside of a program that I offer, then it makes sense to make that offer. If I see it's going to be something else, and this is where when you're going into a call with a preconceived notion, you may not be serving somebody. Uh, quick story, which I'll make brief. Here's a time I was responding to somebody and the end of that call for that specific segment of my market should have been a $200 product. And at the end of it, I said, you know, what you're asking for, there's elements of this in that online program, which is more self-paced you're going after something that the potential for income is much higher. So that's option A. Here's option B, which is more one-to-one -one time, getting more into the details, and even having some of my design team build some of those assets out for you. Uh, I'll tell you in advance, it's going to be substantially more than option one. Yeah. Should we chat about that or no? And he goes, that's what I need. And in that moment, gave me permission, and again, it's not for bragging or boasting, gave me permission to then basically make, let's get the numbers in, a $12,000 offer, which then became this ongoing thing. He recouped that and so much more. So by being open and not be going into it as a preconceived idea, that's where, again, back to the ethics, back to the real mindset, serving people and helping.
Yeah. And I think if you're, if you're watching this and you're, you're not maybe working with your dream clients, I know this was one blunder that I was making was like, was like, yeah, backing up and asking like, wait a minute, like, wh why are we even on this call? Like, what do they want? And so, you know, Jason, for those of us who may be struggling to find more qualifying clients, like maybe, maybe some of us are struggling with clients who are not like following through on the homework. They're not, they don't, they, maybe they reschedule a lot. They don't really show up for sessions. They're not prepared. You know, how can we, you know, are there maybe two ways we can, or what's missing to find more qualifying clients that are not going to drain us, but in fact, actually, you know, we're feeding off each other's energy and everybody's getting more results. All right. So two things come to mind here. One would be asking for the sale at the wrong time. And that right there is why there's so many people who, in my opinion, have this negative expectation of sales, whether they're on the giving end or whether they're on the receiving end, that what's often happening there is someone who almost to the extent of metaphorically as assault went to the offer way too quickly and we were not yet qualified to make that decision. I need to expand on that word. Uh, years ago, I had a bad habit of spraining my back and uh, since got into strength training, that's how you and I got to know each other as well. But here was the scenario where if I went to a massage therapist and I'm sure this is the exact right massage terminology and had them beat up that part of my back, problem went away. Only challenge is I'd go in and they'd give me a menu. Do you want deep tissue? Do you want shiatsu? Do you want sports? Do you like, I'm just right here and whatever, pay for the hour. They'd be working on my feet. I'm like, that's nice. But like, really just 15 minutes beat up here and I'll leave and I'll still tip for the full hour. Uh, <laughs> so what it comes around to is making the offer when the person is not yet ready to make that decision. The biggest part of this, which that then becomes the result of the biggest part is there's too many people out there as coaches, consultants, and whatever categories are here that the riddle that I sort of share with this would be the question, why are most businesses on Facebook? And the answer, unfortunately, is because they think they're supposed to be, and that's unfortunately the end of their strategy. Yeah. When instead, every piece of content, there's enough people out there saying, just put yourself out there, share content. Every piece of content you ever produce needs to satisfy one of several important bullet points. So first of all, from a 30,000 foot view, our content needs to be magnetic. And what I mean by that is either it's going to attract in the people who are a fit for what we do, and here comes a modifying word, will respectfully repel away yeah. the people who are not a fit, or let's be a little bit more positive there, not yet a fit for what we do. From that too, we can look at the content we actually produce. And this is a, a huge moment for many people to realize the stories we tell also start to help people to align with what they're looking for. So if you're in a service, which is, let me work with people that everything is in shambles, everything's falling apart, and I need to build up out of nothing, then tell those stories. When instead, if you're working with more of a higher level clientele, ask yourself, what stories do I have? So an example of this, depending on the audience that's in front of me, there's two stories that begin the same way. And there's a time span of about seven years difference between these two stories. Version one is I'm standing in this empty office that I've just signed a three-year lease on and I don't yet have any clients and I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. That's the story I tell when I'm in front of more of a startup audience. Meanwhile, here's this other story where I'm standing in the same office. And in this story, it's years later. And I thought I had figured everything out. I thought I was greatest thing ever. My schedule's filling up. I'm getting invited to speak at events. And I had to take a call from a client who was putting everything else first and running late. And I was not there for an important family event. And it was this moment where conversation with everyone at home was we needed the money. And it was because at that point in my story on paper, wow, the schedule's filled. I'm doing great. Yet I was not yet putting the real value to what I was doing. So you see, that's a different story that I'll highlight because that's the story I'll tell to bring in those people who want to break out 
of that commodity example. So at the end of the day, the content we produce, you need to put more thinking into it. This is why we share formulas as to what are the images, what are the pictures, what are the feelings that they're connecting with so that the people who are matching up to that story now see you as the person to get to where the next step ought to be. So it's not just content for the sake of content. It's not just putting out the quiz in a group just to go, who's interested in this? It's instead, everything we do tells a story. Make sure you're telling the stories that align with the clientele that you want to attract. Yeah. I, wow. Like so many things came up as you were telling that story. And I, I can remember times where I felt fearful to polarize people. And I, I'm sure some people <laughs> watching, but some people watching are like, wait a minute. I don't want people to like move away from me. Like there's some fear there for whatever reason, money's tight, or you're just getting started, your your confidence or your maybe your self-esteem is attached to that, you know, having that sale go through. But but can you see why, like, if you appeal to everybody, if you're trying to appeal to everybody, you're trying to maybe be, be a people pleaser. <laughs> right? Everybody needs a dog whistle. And <laughs> let's just stop the conversation there. That makes sense. No, let's explain it. <laughs> so if you've trained your dog to respond to the dog whistle and you go to the dog park, you blow the dog whistle, you don't want every dog coming running. Yeah. That's going to be a problem. Or if it's for my eight and 10 year old, it's going to be the coolest thing in the world because just puppies. Um, and instead, you want the right dog coming. That way you can pick it up and then go home. And this becomes one of those make or break moments I found for people in terms of stepping into that expert role. As soon as you realize what you do might not be a fit for everybody, yes, you could probably adjust what you do to help a wider selection. Yet phase one, ask yourself, who is this message going out to? Phase two is to then look at that and ask, and this is what's missing. Ask what are their specific needs? What are their specific concerns? Yes, all of our clients have limiting beliefs, but none of them are walking around going, man, I got to get rid of these limiting beliefs. We need to put it in their language. We need that data in terms of what they're actually looking for. And uh, do you mind if I share a strategy yeah. for this? Okay, yeah. So every piece of content is meant to do either one or the other or both of these things. Everything you do, and this applies even inside of a conversation, and again, ethics first, if it aligns, everything moves forward. If it doesn't align, it means what you're offering is not what they're looking for, find a respectful way out. It's our goal, let's go back to the massage story. Uh, they were asking me to make a decision that I did not yet have the criteria to make the best choice for myself. That's the fatal flaw in that story. Then again, I was already there cash in hand and in pain, so they still got my business. So that's uh, you know abnormality of this. <laughs> Yet everything we're doing is looking to either change the criteria upon which someone is making the decision or to elevate their status in their mind. Let's talk status first. It's not that people don't buy from you because they don't either believe in you or believe in what you offer. One of the biggest flaws that you can help people to overcome is that belief system in themselves. Yeah. This is where if we're telling stories, when the storytelling strategies are implemented correctly, you're inviting your audience to then place themselves in the story that you're telling. Even if it might be this guy who I worked with five years ago, by using the right language patterns at the right time, you're bringing them into that story. And again, they're going to keep going. And what is that actually doing? That's having that person tell the story that not only one, I can make this change, but two, I believe this person can help me. Yeah. So part of that comes from the storytelling strategy, that of how we can elevate their status and have them now changing the story of, unfortunately, here's another thing that might not work versus this is what I'm looking for. The other part, and this one gets technical for a moment, but it's simple, would be that it's our task very often to change the criteria upon which people are shopping. Most often people are shopping, especially coaches. Well, how many sessions? How much? And, and that doesn't mean that they're not motivated. That doesn't mean that they're not a quality client. Sometimes, well, what the hell else would you ask? And it's instead our responsibility in that expert role to guide them to make a better decision for themselves. So the favorite story of this was a 
he did credit repair and he had a problem in his business. He had a lot of repeat clientele. Did you catch that? He does credit repair and his clients kept coming back to him. What did that mean? They did not learn their lesson. They bought another thing they couldn't afford, got credit screwed up again and had to come back to him. To give this man credit, he went off and got training as a life coach, went through different financial training, educational programs, and wanted to, again, stand out from a rather crowded marketplace. And the formula I'm about to share has embedded inside of it the principles of under-promise, over-deliver. And the mathematical formula is, it's not just about X, though we are going to X. It's really about Y so that you can Z. One more time. It's not just about X, though we are going to X. It's really about Y so that you can Z. So it's not just about fixing your credit, though we are going to fix your credit. It's really about changing your emotional mind connection with money so that you never need a service like mine again. Mm -hmm. As soon as he did that, he changed the criteria. Everybody else was selling this deep discount service that the potential client really saw for what it was. It was a Band-Aid. It was paying someone else to swoop in and clean up the mess that they had made themselves. His offer was now substantially higher than everyone else. Yet, I hate the term of perceived value because really he was offering, he was offering actual value in that situation. And by changing that foundation, it's your responsibility as the business owner, as the expert to introduce that ideal criteria. And if I may, it's not just about giving you a few fancy linguistic strategies, though clearly I will give you a few fancy linguistic strategies. It's really about understanding what your language creates in terms of pictures and ideas in people's minds so that they want more from you even before you make the offer. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the session's already started, basically. The work has already started the minute you get on the phone with them. You're already coaching them. Right. And, and that's the biggest takeaway that oftentimes needs to be had. The sales process can really feel as if you're already beginning the actual work versus bullet points, features. And you'll know in the situation through what we call calibration, what kind of buyer they are, how they make their decisions and what's important to them. Uh, we were chatting before we hopped on about a time that I broke a sales process <laughs> to go, hey, I've already gone through every vendor who offers this and none of them are good. Uh, if yours is under this amount, I'm in. And they went, oh, it's this much. I go, great, let me get the card. Can we spend the next 30 minutes with you telling me how to use it? And it turned out to be a great experience. So that's where you don't have to hit me with the what's in it for you and you know what's going to happen if you don't do this. If you're, again, doing those strategies with someone who that's not part of the decision-making criteria, wow. that's where, again, you're going to be butting up against a brick wall and you're not serving that person. Yeah. Yeah. I remember someone telling me, a mentor of mine a while ago, um, she kept telling me the energy is the same, like whether it's a, let's talk high ticket sales here. Maybe we're talking more than 5,000, maybe 6,000, 10,000, 15,000. And maybe you're like, Hey, I want to sell something like that, but you're, maybe you're still selling maybe a few sessions at a time. You're selling by number of sessions or you're selling maybe one or two, $3,000 programs. What, what I, what someone told me one day, maybe this will resonate with the audience. It's like, it's the same energy, whether it's a 6,000, 10,000, 15. And I was like, what? I contemplated that for months and I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and then finally one day it, it, it's, it's, I saw what she meant by that. It's everything you just talked about, Jason. It's like, instead of yeah, trying to like corner them, <laughs> like you said, like, well, what's this, what's going to happen if you don't do this? It's like, it doesn't even matter if they don't think they can. Right. right? Yeah. Well, it's again, it's about changing the story that they may already be telling themselves and again, only advance forward in the process when you see that it's in alignment with what that person is looking for. But you hit on something big there, which is the journey from $0 to $27 is even bigger than the journey from $27 to $5,000. Mm -hmm. That it's this connection in terms of, even I'm hesitant to use a phrase like an energy exchange, mm -hmm. but it's the fact that now they've come out of that free category. Yeah. And instead into a much more premium category. And I, I, I've learned certain words have expectations in the mind. Uh, so yes, I teach systems for high ticket sales, but we call it 
premium sales. Why? Because it invites a new way of looking at a similar situation. The same as, and this is a standard reframe, you talked about the client who's not showing up and running late, uh, as was one of my stories I shared. And this may surprise people. Um, I've never had a cancellation policy in my, I've never had a cancellation fee in my business. It's interesting. Thousands of clients, yeah, I, one to I one. That. It's a rescheduling policy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a different set of words. But it, cancellation fee means, how dare you? You're being penalized, pay this. And you'll never see that person again, even if it was their fault. Uh, instead, though, it's a rescheduling policy. Um, can I get colorful with language respectfully here? Absolutely. Let's okay. Do it. We also do live by the don't be a dick policy, uh, which I think every business needs because, hey, the kid's sick from school or we had a moment where we were doing a live training event online, mind you, and she's falling behind in the schedule because, you know, there's a pandemic still going on. It's like, hey, you know how you're worried about catching up? Yeah. Um, check this link. Do you want to move to the next event? Good. It's done. Don't worry about it. And then, unfortunately, symptoms remained, moved to the next event, and now she's in it and doing great. So at the end of the day, you know, treat people well really becomes the principle of it. Yet, uh, yeah, especially in that high ticket space, the reality of how you're helping to solve a very specific problem and really going back to what you said there about number of sessions, and the number of expectations, this is where the quality of the sales process we do is often directly proportionate to the quality of the questions that we ask. And for me to go into that situation and go in with a blank slate now, yes, I know, um, I'm going to use the term of SKUs. I know the different SKUs in our business, even though there's no physical products, it's all online programs or services or group consulting. I know here's the things that are in mind, that here are my solutions, or sometimes it's a combo they're in. And it's by listening to that person, hearing where they are. That's where, back to the massage example, it's my responsibility to then say, based on that, I think the best choice is, and then present it. And then from there, ask the open-ended question. Do you think that's the best fit for you? And as you get a yes to that, you've now been given permission to then make the offer. So it's always, again, consent-based, permission-based sales, yet really easiest way to tie this together. Two ears, one mouth. It ought to be proportionate. <laughs> <laughs> We made it, but I was like, no, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jason. So, you know, as we wrap up, I know we don't have a lot of time, but maybe for those coaches or co consultants who are watching, maybe who struggle with really sharing their desire rate, maybe these are coaches and consultants who have been in business for a while. And maybe their rates have stayed the same for a while and they're not, they're maybe hesitant on charging more because of, you know, what fear of rejection from their, you know, their current customers or even new customers. Like what might be, you know, what could we, is there something we can shift so we can start to feel more comfortable about sharing? Let's say, you know, we're now charging $9.97 a month or $2,000 a month or versus like just paying for maybe you know, a few sessions at a time, like, um, what's one way we can start to feel more comfortable about raising our rates? Yeah. So one idea comes to mind, which there are some linguistics that are inside of this. And oftentimes, yes, there's work we can do in terms of boosting our confidence. I put that in the category of emotional intelligence. There's strategies we can use to connect more on that emotional level. At the end of the day, though, if you find yourself in a situation where, hey, business is already flowing in, things are already working quite well, and you're in that situation where now I've come around to this idea that uh, two things, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to do it the rest of your life. And a phrase that comes right out of old school vaudeville theater, the amateur changes their act, the professional changes their audience. So it's up to everyone out there, if they want to keep doing the same style of business with existing clients, maybe the quick moment to say, hey, we've changed the way that people come into this. So if you're ever making a referral, you know, just understand it's going to be a different situation. And I'll call something out on that one. Uh, I did that years ago with someone who often refers to me and he knows 
14 years ago, he came in for the first two appointments for $350. And here's the person who he just sent my way, which was a pay in full for a little over 6,000, which yes, in 14 years time, I've gotten better at it. So we'll say that's slightly deserved. Yet also I found the better way to work with those sets of issues and more of a hybrid, more uh, organic approach to it. Yet I, I'd say this, um, Again, a little bit of a reframe here. I don't like the term upsell. It's instead an upgrade. And to even tap into the systems as to how it's a different process, it's a different set of psychological triggers for someone to be upgraded from a product into a service. Let's say if you're selling eBooks or a mini course is the way to bring people into what you do. It's also a different series of triggers in the mind to move from a service into a product or to talk to somebody who's expecting they're buying a service. And really my favorite word for this is they're getting a hybrid approach, which is that as we're working together in real time, you're gonna be in this community. Yet if things are already working, you're in the situation that you can test, you can play with the systems in a brand new way and there's safety to that. So overall, I think the majority of people out there, if business is already flowing in, you probably don't have to do the free consult anymore. Instead, this is where there's a linguistic pattern called a complex equivalence. It's like a cause and effect relationship where instead, because it's raining, I'm now wet. That's cause and effect. Because my microphone is plugged in, you can hear me. That's cause and effect. Yet the fact that we're still having this conversation clearly means there's gonna be an amazing audience for this event. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's a complex equivalence where one piece of information becomes the meaning of another piece of information. So, so listen to the sequence of this. In one of my businesses that I don't necessarily have the interest in shutting down, I just have the interest in minimizing, but only working with the best clients for that style of work that I got my start doing, but now do other things. So rather than shut it down, we change the sequence as to how people get to me, which would be those people now watch a video presentation, uh, which Lydia is maybe about five or six minutes longer than it needed to be. And that was done intentionally. So I can land this little complex equivalence linguistic statement that you can imagine there's people out there who are just curious about this, who are just exploring the idea. And let's just call this out. Those are not the people who would watch a video this far into the presentation. And the fact that you're here clearly means that this is important to you. Now, obviously, from what I've shared with you, working with people one-to-one -one is not the only thing that I do. So out of respect to everybody involved, uh, that's why you can see there's a button down below to schedule time to chat with me. And assuming the call goes as we know it will, you'll see the button does ask a $200 deposit. If call goes as we want, that'll then become a deposit toward your program. Or in the rare chance that it's not for you, it takes me three clicks and your money is refunded. So there's no risk to this. We just do this to be respectful of everybody's time. I did this to push away a segment of my business because there were other projects we were looking at growing um, and business took off once again. So that instead I asked by a series of actions to become the signal that yes, they are the ideal clients. Um, I'm aware of bold claims. <laughs> we are 100% of the person who pays the deposit working with me in some context, unless it's something that I make the decision that there might be some sort of, let's say scope of practice type issue that there's some ethical reason why I would not be the best fit for them. Someone messaged a while ago going, hey, here's this medical situation, can you cure it? I'm like, no, I'm not a doctor nor do I pretend to be one on the web. Yet here's someone I know who may be of help to that, but I've gone ahead and refunded your money because that's not what I do. And I, I did that just to draw a line very solidly. So those are the examples where we've done that. And if your business already has people booked out in advance, that's your safest place to test the system. And yours might not be $200 to kick off with, though it might even be higher. Uh, we have one place where people just pay 20 bucks and it's just that little bit of a foot in the door for them to raise their hands and say, I'm serious. And there's another segment of my business, and we teach the system of this in our community, where uh, 
here's here's the language. Um, hey, you've seen that thing on the web where they have you fill out a form to schedule a strategy session. Well, as this is going to a business audience, you and I both know that's code for sales presentation. Uh, so we're gonna do things differently here. When you fill out the form below, it's gonna process a $975 payment because this is not a sales call. We're going to dive in together and actually get to work right away. And I'm gonna ask you to take some notes. And if you can look at your notes at the end of the call and tell me that there's nothing there that you can take action upon that you see will help you to grow your business, it takes me three clicks, I will refund that money. However, at the end of the call, this is not the situation with the heavy sale. I'm gonna give you the closing language right here, right now. Okay, so what do you wanna do? And at that point, you'll either see the value in what we do, and we can talk about how to apply that into the full program, or, hey, you might have got what you needed in just the one-hour call, at which point, awesome, go for it. So there's another segment of the business where we use the payment as the foot in the door, which I think a lot of people in their industries don't give themselves permission to even put value to their time. And I've tested this. We've had people in our programs make use of it as well. And consistently, the business goes up. You drop off that bottom 30, 40% of people that, for whatever reason, probably wouldn't have booked in the first place, which gives you more time to dive into outstanding programs like the ones that either I or Lydia offer. See how we did that? <laughs> so, <right? laughs> I, I just go into a trance listening to you. But it's like I'm aware of the story that I'm moving through. It's like, it's like, it's like you're telling you're moving people through a story, like from here to where you know they want to be. But it's, it's the words that you use are so important for those of you watching. Are you hearing how different this is, the language you hear Jason using compared to what you might say, right? And it's right. Not and, and to break the language patterns down, and the whole thing is, I believe in teaching the formulas beneath it. None of this becomes scripted. Um, that's not scripted, but it's memorized because I probably reshot that video 20 times until I was happy with it. <laughs> Anybody who has any fear of going on camera, just remember they only ever see the last take. Just yeah. keep that in mind. <laughs> or it's why I started doing more live stuff because I'm like, nope, we're going to make it work. The words of Lauren Michaels, Saturday Night Live, whether we're ready or not, the show goes live at 1130. And uh, I'm going to quote waiting, Jason real quick is it's not a mistake unless you say oops. <laughs> yeah, it's only a mistake if you say whoops. Whoops, whoops, not oops. So many people need to remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? A, wow. Like, if you are struggling in business, right, You maybe you're at the script stage or like you got this script. Maybe it's worked for a certain group. But when you start to focus more on higher or premium sales or higher ticket sales, like this group wants more from you, right? They really, in order to feel safe to create that investment, like we have to create a safe, a safe place. We have, obviously this group needs to feel heard. They need to feel seen, validated, all of these things, but also make it easy for them, right? Like take them on this journey, like using all of these different influence patterns, which is just I mean, just mind blowing. This is what's gonna help transform the journey for your clients, not even just on the sales call, but just if you're doing master classes, if you're doing um, any kind of sales presentation or just any presentation in general. Uh, just, I mean, go check out more of Jason's stuff. I know we have to wrap up here, but Jason, I know you have a free gift for this audience called the, the Video Influence System. Is that correct? Yeah, so I discovered working with some of my clients over the years, who reported a fear of public speaking, we'd work on that, we'd build up the confidence, yet they'd still be the deer in the headlights in front of the audience or in front of the camera, or even for written you know, content, they'd have the blank screen of death and call it writer's block. When, if you know that your words can drive influence, if you know that your words can create new stories, let's give people a formula to then show up with greater confidence and show up with greater authority as a result. So the video influence system, uh, was not created. It was discovered by tracking what were the videos that myself and even my students in our community were doing and what was the formula, what was the pattern we could then pull out of it. So in a short amount of time, or really however long the video needs to be, it's seven steps to hit in a very specific order. Some of them might only take a couple of seconds, yet it's a way of driving the narrative in the video so that even before you get to the last step, which is giving the call to action, you have your ideal clients 
metaphorically, if not literally, raising their hands and saying, I want more. If they're only hearing the sales journey at the very last moment, chances are you've already lost it. And if instead you can ethically embed it inside, so they're already telling the story. And by the time you get to the offer, the opportunity, or the invite, as I like to call it, they're already in alignment with that. So I've got a last name that people butcher. And I know I'm saying that to someone with uh, your last name as well. So uh, I'd say go to jasoninfluence.com. We've put that on-demand training over there. Oh, look at that pointing. That is oh, the link below. That is okay. right there. <laughs> or it's easy to remember, jasoninfluence.com. I mean, we do own every misspelling of jasonlinette.com and all the wrong ones redirect to the right one, but just make it easy on yourself. jasoninfluence.com gives you instant on-demand access to that training. And then you'll see in the emails, we've got a community. Once you've made your video, share it with us. We'll give you some feedback on it too. That's awesome. Wow. Thanks, Jason, for, for being here with us today. Go click the link below. Go get this free gift. Like, what are you waiting for? If you're stuck on scripts, if you're like getting frustrated with your audience, maybe you have an audience, right? And they're not taking action. Like, like how can you connect even better? How can you take them on a journey from where they are now to where they really want to be? And again, it's we're really kind of starting to shake up these beliefs here, this um, taking apart these support teams of their beliefs. And it's it's not about more manipulation is, is probably the biggest aha for most of you today. It's not about, well, what's the right thing to say? Or when should I say this thing? It's like, you gotta be present. You gotta be, it's gotta be organic. It's gotta feel good to them in the end. So if you need more help with this, if you want more help with these language patterns, you wanna do these, we, we call hypnotic language patterns, but it's all the same thing. You don't have to be a hypnotist to get good at speaking in a way that creates more impact. Go click the link below, go grab this free offer. And Jason, any last words from you before we, before we jump off here? Just every time it's change your words, change your business, change your life. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Let's do it, everyone. I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready. And Jason, thank you much. So thank you so much for joining us on the Convert with Confidence Summit.